Now you can imagine the, the, the aroma when you get inside of this bar. It's just amazing. And let's talk uh, about the rum. But we cannot talk about that the product was created in Venezuela. So you have to imagine this is a Caribbean Sea, South America, that was here. And you see Trinidad, it's really, really close to Venezuela. When you are in Trinidad, actually you see Venezuela from the coast. When you're in Venezuela, you see Trinidad on the coast. But what is very important is that this island, Trinidad and Tobago, has been very important strategically because it's the door to the Caribbean, to Southern Caribbean. Now, that's why the story of Trinidad is a little bit turbulent, turbulent, because after the arrival of the Spanish in 1489, and until the final arrival of the British in 1787, uh, the island was passing from one hand to the other to different empires. That means the Spanish, the Dutch, the French, and finally the English uh, were colonized the island. What that means uh, with these four big empires colonizing the island means that you need, or you, you have a very uh, massive flux first of slaves and then of uh, paid workers to work in the sugar canes. So the, each empire was bringing in slaves and workers from the other colonies they got. That meant that you got people from Africa, from Northern, Northern Europe, from Southeast Asia, from India, from Hong Kong, from Madeira, from China. And now, today, Trinidad and Tobago is one of the most mixed and diverse islands in the world. That's so that, just a little, little anecdote, uh, Trinidad and Tobago is the country that has the highest number of bank holidays in the world. That's because all the religions are represented in the culture, and so they celebrate every single uh, holiday of every religion. And also they celebrate the carnival. Carnival is huge in Trinidad. It's the massive party that happens once a year. During one week, the country just paralyzes itself. Everybody, everybody's in the, the one point something million population of Trinidad are playing mass. It's what they call doing carnival and, and, and hanging around with, with each other in their super fluffy and feathery costumes. So they spend 11 years, 11 months through the year preparing their, their, their customs and their, their way to, to dance to go to the carnival. And then after carnival, they spend one year of depression. The, 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 actually, the productivity of the island drops down during March after the carnival. And they have a special word to, to, to denote this um, post-carnival depression. The word is tabanka, but it really exists, and it's a cultural asset, carnival in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, also, Angostura is the only legal distillery in the island of Trinidad. That means that every bottle of Trinidadian rum that's on the market outside is, comes from Angostura distillery. No matter where you see Trinidad and rum, whether it is bottles of Angostura or older label, older brand that has Trinidad and rum inside, it comes from the distillery of Angostura. Very clear, Trinidad and rum is Angostura rum, always. Now, we're gonna go very fast on how do we do the rum. Does everybody know how do we do the rum, the basics, what should we do? Go to the basics very fast. Now, rum comes. Rum is a is a spare drinks, spare drink that comes from sugar cane. Now, this sugar cane can be uh, either sugar cane juice or the byproduct after refination of sugar cane juice, which is the molasses. Okay. Uh, we talk about the French heritage rum, which is done with sugar cane juice. And then we talk about the English and the Hispanic heritage rum, which is done with molasses. Trinidad and Tobago being an uh, ex-British colony, we use molasses. Okay? Every bottle of Angostura is done with the most high quality molasses we can find. Now this molasses needs to be fermented. Uh, fermentation is a process where yeast <coughs> converts the sugar existing in the molasses 
to alcohol. It's very important to note that Angostura uses its own yeast, bespoke yeast, which is the same since 1949, since we started distilling rum. That's why the fermentation in Angostura, it's just for Angostura. No other distillery will make the same, the same fermentation, since no other distillery has the same yeast. We do not share the yeast with anyone else. Okay? We will have this particular way of fermenting from our stuff. Now we uh, ferment between 48 and 72 hours, depending on the heat and on the, on the climate we get, on the weather. Uh, but once we get the fermentation, we get kind of a molasses wine. But the problem with yeast is that, like human beings, can only be around a certain amount of alcohol. You know, human beings, when they are around a certain, a certain amount of alcohol, they go to sleep. Yeast is exactly the same. Yeast can convert sugar into alcohol just up to a certain amount, between 11 and 16 degrees, depending on the yeast, depending on the sugars. Now, a molasses wine of 16 degrees, it's fine, but 40 degrees is fine here, right? You, you, you get even better. So, what do we need to do to concentrate this alcohol uh, of fermentation? It's distillation. Distillation is a process where you heat your wine, your molasses wine, molasses, fermented molasses. And since alcohol has a boiling point lower than water, the alcohol is going to evaporate before the water. Now, once the alcohol is evaporating, you cool it, you cool it, so it becomes again liquid, and you collect alcohol, concentrate alcohol in the other side. Each time you do this process, you get more and more alcohol at the, at the final end. But you also get less liquid. That's why it's costly. It's costly uh, distillation. Now we use a uh, continuous distillation process of five columns. Those are our five columns of distillation. And once we have distilled all our rum, we have a rum that tills 80 and 96 degrees ABD. Now this is the same rum we're going to use to make Angostura bitters. It comes straight from the from the steel to make Angostura bitters. But then the one that's not used to make Angostura bitters goes to aging. We are not going to just drop the rum from the steel straight into the bottle. That's not our it's not our cup of tea. It's not Trinidadian rum. What we do is age it. And we age it in a warehouse with more than 80,000 barrels. Uh, X bourbon barrels. What does X bourbon barrels mean? Uh, very fast. Bourbon distilleries are not allowed to, to age twice in the same barrel. Once they have aged three years their bourbon, they need to either throw or sell the cask. So we bought bourbon barrels to put our rum inside. That's going to give certain char characteristics to the rum. Now, why it is put here tropical aging? It is very important to note that we age in tropical weather. You, you know that uh, you can age in several parts of the world. Yeah. France and Scotland, for example, are ex uh, example of that. But it is very different from aging in the tropics. Why? Humidity, heat, but also seasonal. What happened in Europe is that we got mostly two seasons. Warm season and cold season. What happened in the tropics, what happened in the Caribbean, is a part of the humidity that you get, because you get, you're in an island, surrounded by water, you got the same temperature and same humidity through the year, but your change in temperature are done through the day. The day is very, very warm, the night is not cold, but it's chilly. That means that the wood 
expanding contracts and expanding contracts and expanding contracts and it's breathing every day the wood is breathing the wood of the gas that allows the liquid the rock to penetrate way more into the wood and so to pick up more flavors and aromas from the wood that is important of tropic energy but then we have even another thing thank you very much we are not going just to pick up the uh, aged rum and put it into a bottle. That would be too easy. Some people do that. We don't. What we do is blending. Blending is really where the house of Angostura takes most of its sprout. What is blending? We take different rums from, of different ages and we make a cocktail of rum to put inside a bottle. That means that our master blender tastes this rum, which has that has five years old, and this rum that's seven years old, and this rum that's nine, and this that's thirteen, and this that's fifteen, and the master blender joins them together inside a single product that is better than the sum of its parts, and that rum cocktail it's bottled and then distributed all around the world in the form of Angostura rum. That is the secret of the high quality premium rum of Angostura, blending. Now, you will notice that you have an age statement here, five, Angostura five. What does that mean? The minimum value. The, 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 the list uh, is, uh, is five years. It's five years. Yeah. yeah. It's five years. <laughs> you go one, which on the telephone? Can you say that as well? Yeah, just the one. Uh, exactly. There's a difference between the Solera statement, which is used in, in South America, and the age statement of Angostura. We are allowed to uh, age uh, statement the youngest rum in South not the old. Now, why do we see an Angostura 5 or an Angostura 7 or an Angostura 15? That means that the youngest rum is 5 or 7 or 15. But it will be, there will be inside older rums than that. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. When you see a rum from Guatemala or from Nicaragua or from uh, Cuba or from Venezuela, which is 23 years old, 31 years old, that means that the oldest is 23 or 31 years old. Whether this kind of rums, British Island, it is the youngest. Okay? Very important. Now, let's drink some rum, guys. Everybody has a glass in front of you? Great. Hmm. Well, let's go with the Angostura Reserva. Now, a lot of people could say this is a white rum. Well, let me tell them they're wrong. This is not a white rum. A white rum is a rum that comes straight from the steel and goes to the bottle and doesn't have any aging. This rum has been aged for minimum of three years, then chill filter. That's why it is transparent. Even if when it comes out of the cask, it is golden. Like it, it has been aged three years. Then we chill filter. That means that through several layers of activated charcoal, uh, we make it pour drop by drop, and then we collect it, and it becomes totally transparent. Nothing, nothing to be to be a worry about activated charcoal. Just to know it. That's the way how we make potable water. Okay. So there is nothing of, uh, bad about activated charcoal. Um, you see, the color has disappeared with chill filtering. But another thing has disappeared, and it's the wood impurities that you can have after three years of, age, of aging. That's why you have only fruits in this rum. You get the coconut that goes straight into the nose, that silky coconut aroma. And then when you, when you try it, when you sip it, there are all the tropical fruits that are going to develop. Pineapple, ripe banana, mango, uh, apricot, a little bit of almond. Now you're gonna feel as well when you sip it that it's very, very smooth. 
in your throat. It's almost silky, greasy. That is as well because of the chill filtering. It gives them this uh, silky body, really smooth, like a, like a caress that uh, that comes into your throat. Now this rum. This rum is perfect to make some cocktails, very fresh cocktails, very simple cocktails like a daiquiri or a mojito, where you're using just a little bit of lime, a little bit of sugar, and so what this is what's going to make a base for this rum to enhance all the fruity flavors of this rum. Uh, what can we do as well? You may notice that there are a lot of people that like their, what we call in the Caribbean, rum and cheese. Rum and cheese is a rum and a mixer. Classic rum and coke, or rum and ginger ale, or rum and ginger beer. There's a lot of people who like that. We like to propose these with coconut water. This is a really, really simple way of making a rum and cheese from a mixer, but without having an overly sweet soda or bubbles, and also going for a local product, and it's coconut water, and that goes really, pairs really, really well with this velvety, mellow coconut flavor of the rum with this salinity and vegetable uh, sweetness as well of the, uh, of the coconut water. So that's our single serving. Reserva, coconut water, some Angostura beers. Amazing. Now, you will notice as well that there is always a butterfly in the bottles of Angostura. And barely see it here because of the light. But it will be always here. Pass through, pass it through. So there will always be a butterfly hidden somewhere in a bottle of Angostura, Angostura rum. And that is because history of rum in Trinidad. The butterflies actually were the symbol that people could start making rum. Now, 100 years ago, we didn't have any lab to measure quality of the sugar cane or any pH measure or any brixometer or any anything modern that we get. Uh, what people in Trinidad did, uh, did to know when the sugar cane were in the optimal highest concentration of sugar inside was wait for the butterflies to come. So butterflies that were migrating from South America to North America. If the butterflies came through Trinidad and stopped by the sugarcane fields and started to drink the sugarcane juice that actually was flourishing from the sugarcane meant that the sugarcanes were in the optimal stage of sugar concentration and thus we could harvest, we could uh, start making rum with that. So sugar, uh, butterflies meant rum season, that's fun season and that's, that's why uh, there's always butterfly in the bottle of Angostura. We are going to try our original five. Now, what we're going to try now, it's a... Uh... Yeah, sure, please. What makes a difference from Bacar? Yeah, very strong. Exactly. Exactly. Why? Yeah. Why? Uh, Bacardi is a white rum. Bacardi comes straight from the still to the bottle. It has no aging. That's why it is way more strong than Reserva. Reserva has been aged for three years. When you age the spirit, it's going to mellow it. Uh, when you are aging the spirit, uh, there is a uh, phenomenon of evaporation that's called the angel share. You heard about uh, when, the, when the alcohol starts evaporating, that means that with the interaction of the wood, the liquid that is inside is going to be rested, matured. And so it's less pungent and it's more wrong. The maturation makes it more wrong. You have said that, and you have the, the other brother who said it's very explosive. But that one is super smooth. That's because of the aging. Now, what, what we mean is like the amount of 
the amount of love actually and of passion that it's put inside this rock is very hard to, to find in other rocks that are transparent. And I'm not gonna say it's white because it's not white. But that's what I mean. Angostura rum, Angostura Reserva has a passion, a lot of time be, uh, behind this, this work, and a lot of love in aging and blending to get this product. Is there any other question about Reserva? I have a question. Why X Bobon? Why sorry? Why X Bobon cask? Okay, okay. Uh, why not not uh, sherry cask? Uh, or uh, maybe champagne cask or something? Very good question, very good question. Uh, ex bourbon cask for every rum in the international portfolio of Angostura. Why? It is a question of tradition for Trinidadian rum. It's mellowed in uh, ex bourbon cask, so it's the traditional way of making Trinidadian rum. Uh, nevertheless, that doesn't mean that Angostura does not age in other casks. We get some limited editions that are, has been aged in cognac cask or in sherry cask. That is called edition, uh, limited edition number one. Number one. But uh, they're very, very rare. Uh, in, in, it, it only launched in a really small quantity each two years. But we make this kind of age, statement, uh, age aging sorry, and finishing. The only thing is like we make so a uh, big volume of rum that we cannot make uh, this finishing for every rum. What it means is that we don't have enough sherry cask or cognac cask to make all the rum that we need to make just to make it just in the line of the of the international portfolio. So we make limited editions, but it does exist. It does exist. Another question: uh, you, you, the yeast. How? Where do you get your yeast? Which region? Uh, Trinidad. Uh, the yeast actually was, uh, it, it is a branch of yeast, a little family of yeast that were created in Trinidad and it's still been the same yeast since 1949 because the yeast actually, again like human beings, uh, the yeast reproduce, the yeast have babies that then become toddler yeast and then teenager yeast and then adult yeast and those yeast have more babies and so yeast reproduces all over the, the generations and that's why we know that it's the same same yeast but it's a yeast cultivated in Trinidad by Angostura and no one else it comes from Trinidad so it's not an open fermentation as you can have another kind of rum it's really close close control fermentation I still have so many questions hey, go on. Uh, um, to the Angostura bitters yeah uh, you've said that uh, the natural ingredients are sourced from different countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain the quality? Because we know there is a, a different you know, factors like global warming and changing climate. How do you maintain the quality? Because I know uh, there is some limited editions and there are some different batches with the different recipes mm -hmm. to, uh, to compensate for the period to get uh, like the real quality that you're supposed to have to make the same thing. Yeah. Exactly, as you said, uh, Angostura beers, it is like any other product that comes from the earth, changing and dependent on the quality and the weather and, the, and how the, all the raw materials are done. So of course that Angostura beers can change from one batch to, uh, to another. What do we do uh, to maintain quality? Uh, the, the only thing that we do to maintain quality is to respect the earth and what the earth give, gives us. Now, that doesn't mean that we are going to genetically engineer our spices so they always have the same, the same flavor. What we do is that we respect what the earth gives to us and, and if the flavor has to slightly change, it will slightly change, that's no problem. So, another question also. Uh, Agosura, the first bitters was arom aromatic. Yep. So aromatic, that means there's no specific flavor that it's pronounced than the other flavors. So which which flavor can you can we say that aromat the aromatic bit the the, the Agosura aromatic has a pronounced flavor that you can depict? Why don't you tell me? Because you've worked, uh, you you know you you have the the the, the, the different. Uh, 
of course, people who have the recipe, but aromatic means any flavor. Any flavor that you can feel, that's, that is the flavor. But that, that is the secret of Angostura. That it's not chocolate bitters, or it's not cherry bitters, yes. or celery bitters. Yes. No, no. The flavor of Angostura aromatic bitters is Angostura aromatic bitters. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, it's a flavor that is unique in itself. And then you, you try to reproduce it, even with another brand, everybody's going to say, ah, oh, that smells like Angostura aromatic bitters. So I can tell you a lot of, of flavors that you can have inside, but there's no one that is main flavor. Yeah. So you can have, does anybody, anybody knows what we can say as like flavors? Come on, I still haven't beans and stuff. No? Because for me, I feel almond more. You feel almond? almond? Yeah. All right. Yeah. First time I hear that, but that's yeah. good. But you have already a pin, don't you? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Cinnamon. Oh, okay. Orange juice. Orange juice. Huh? Almost two like orange juice. Oh, that's another beer that we have. That's the beer. But you have some orange as well. <laughs> Cinnamon, clove, anise, ginger, lavender, chocolate, all right. Now, I don't know what's inside, but that's the aroma. So that, that's what makes uh, the Agostura unique. Exactly. But it's not a chocolate beer, it's not a celery beer, it's not a cherry beer, it's Angostura aromatic bitters. Because most of the, uh, of the other bitters are made from a green, uh, green spirit. Yeah. But this one is made from the, the, the rum. Right. So exactly. uh, the, even the complexity is very different in terms of uh, the, the aromas, you know? Uh, like just you said that there's a uh, you can use an, an alcohol like rock shandy when you use rock shandy with the agostura bitters it's changed the game with it uh, compared to other bitters that's exactly. why i wanted to know i swear you we didn't pay him for the same <laughs> <laughs> but you, you yeah you're right you're yeah, right. yeah that's what i mean i mean you know there are some sodas as well very popular soda with the red label you try it and you you know what is it you can cook cook yeah. You know what it is? It is so particular flavor that it doesn't. When you when you try it, you don't say, "Oh, that's a cola, soda cola." No, you say it's Coca Cola. Well, that's exactly what happened with that. Try to reproduce it without being catalog like Angostura bitters because of the flavor palette that it has. That's the uniqueness of Angostura bitters. Have have found a recipe that's recognizable for for, for everyone. Another question. Another question, let's go. You say there's uh, only five people who knows the recipe of Agostura. Yeah. How do we, do they pass the, the information? Because you, you can't live forever. Okay, how, sure. how, how do you pass uh, the, that generation to the other generation? What, what is the criteria? What is the selection? And, uh, I would love to tell you that I know that, but I don't even know that. <laughs> so that, would be, that would be even a risk. <laughs> if I knew that, I could investigate and research a little bit. And you know, it, it's a story to, to write a, to make a film, for a spy film, things like that. But I, I, I do not know that. I really do not know that. I'm sorry. Uh, and there's a lot of secrecy in the recipe. <laughs> but I imagine that there's a council that actually names the people that that needs to know the recipe. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think if we try the five, five-year-old? Or you tried it already? No? Alright, now five year old. The five year old, it has been aged minimum five years, but uh, in opposition of the Reserva, this one, it hasn't been chill filtered. So you have the wood in the nose and the mouth. You're gonna have this complex body of the wood and spices and molasses that you keep from not chill filtering. You're still having the, uh, the fruits, so you're still having the, the, uh, the tropical flavors, but these fruits are gonna be a little bit more greasy, more like passion fruit, grapefruit, dried uh, apricot, almost like fig, a little bit more sugary concentrate fruits that's going to be inside. Now, this rum is perfect to make more complex cocktails. Than we, than we had before. The Mai Tai, the Zombie, Quince Black Swizzle, those cocktails uh, which have a lot of uh, dilution through juices or fruits or syrups, uh, request a rum like Angostura 5. 
because the body of a mushroom of fire, the spicy notes that's going to have, they're not going to let to dilute with all the other ingredients. Again, if you want to uh, want to use it in more simple cocktails like a rum and coke or a mojito, it works perfectly fine. It's going to have just a little bit more of, uh, of body, but it's a it's a really versatile rum from either complex cocktails or simple servings. So, have you tried it with me? You haven't had? No. Well, you can feel more of the spices than before, right? That's mellow, that's greasy. What we call in Trinidad this, uh, this uh, rum, five rum, it is the cloud rum. The rum that it's a cloud. It is fluffy and very sweet, but if you drink too much, it can be a storm. See? That's why you need, you need to really need to drink it with a lot of responsibility. Now, I want to talk to you about two things. The first one is Amaro de Angostura. Uh, now, this is a premiere in Kenya, okay? This hasn't been released in Kenya yet, and it will be on the market in several months or weeks. Will come. This is Amaro de Angostura, a real Caribbean liqueur from the house of Angostura. Amaro de Angostura is the answer to the problem of why do why are not drinking Angostura aromatic bitters. Now everybody knows Angostura bitters, everybody recognizes the flavor of Angostura bitters, and everybody loves the flavors of Angostura bitters. Why, are, why aren't we drinking on the rocks? Why well, it's pretty much not potable. It's, pretty, it's not easy to drink them like that. So, the answer is Amaro di Angostura, a liquor based on the same recipe, the same botanicals of Angostura aromatic bitters. It is created with the base of Italian Amaros, you know, bitter sweet liquors that are done either for the aperitif or for the digestive. But this one has the particularity that has these Caribbean spices inside. So, it is a bitter sweet Amaro like liquor. But it also has this Caribbean spicy vibe. That's why it serves to be drinked on its own on the, on, the, on the rocks or as a cocktail ingredient. When I mean a cocktail ingredient, it can be a modifier. You make your Manhattan and you put a bar spoon of uh, Amaro de Angostura, or it can be the main ingredient into your cocktail. We get this cocktail that's called Amora Amaro, which is five females of Amaro de Angostura, then lime and sugar. It's kind of an amount of sour. It is just amazing, the balance that it has. I always like to know that we launched it in 2014 for the 190th anniversary of the House of Angostura. And in the year later, in 2015, it won the best new spirit or cocktail ingredients in Tales of the Cocktail, which is the most notable uh, cocktail trade show ever in the world. Uh, this is very important for you to know because it's one of the uh, necessities to enter the Angostura Global Cocktail Challenge. That's the second thing I wanted to talk to you about. Now, Angostura Global Cocktail Challenge is a global cocktail competition. It is the quest of the House of Angostura New Global Brand Ambassador. The price of this competition is two-year contract as a global brand ambassador for the House of Angostura. That means traveling the whole world, representing and sharing the love for the House of Angostura. You also have 10,000 US dollars as a price, which is not big legible, right? It's pretty cool. Now, uh, what you have to do to enter this competition? First of all, you need to be a bartender, okay? And you will have to demonstrate that you're a bartender because there is an online test uh, you have to pass. It takes you less than half an hour to do it. Uh, with some questions about bartending, you will have to pass this uh, this test, this online test, to show that you know what you're doing. Then you need to present two cocktails: one cocktail with Angostura rum, and another cocktail with Amaro di Angostura. You need to make a video of yourself making just the rum cocktail. 
and then you just have to complete the reading entry, your name, your age, who you are, what you do, what you want to do in life, etc. Kind of a, a resume to, to enter a competition. Now, what is important in this competition, there will be one bartender select, selected from, uh, from Kenya, which will go straight to the regional finals for Africa and the Middle East, which will take place in Cyprus at the end of October. That means if you are selected here in, in Kenya, you go straight to Cyprus, you have a very Cyprus weekend, uh, to do the competition. In the competition, you will have to present your two cocktails. Okay? If you win, well, when you win in Cyprus, you will go straight to the global finals in Trinidad and Tobago during Carnival. Now, just to give you a little hint, I went to the global finals. Okay? I didn't win the global finals, I didn't get the global brand ambassador. I'm still here. <laughs> right? What I mean is, when you enter the Angostura family, you are Angostura family forever. And even if you're not global brand ambassador, believe me, whenever we need a ta talented bartender to represent the brand, wherever it goes, we will have a number to call. We encourage you enormously to enter Angostura Global Cocktail Challenge. It's going to be a life-changing experience. It was for me. I was in the carnival. And when I was in the carnival, I mean, I was dressed up in carnival. I was some feathers and I was dancing with the people. I was in Trinidad in the carnival. I really tell you, guys, it worth it. It's a lot of job. It's a lot of work to get in. But it's really worth it. Now, tomorrow, we're going to make a session to help you out making the videos and to help you out making the entry forms uh, for whatever of you, whoever of you are, is interested, you will need to tell us. We'll take your name, your contact, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Dennis, you want to say something? All right, sorry. It was just telling me that you need to tell who is interested, and we will do the best that we can tomorrow to help you out in the two or three hours that we get to to make. Uh, to make you go into the competition. So you're still having until the 15th of September, which is Sunday, so it's really, pretty really rush. Question, um, the online com uh, exam, theater of mixing, is it based on a time frame? Because when I did the, the exam, I still kept getting the same mark, either because I did the exam too fast or I don't know. And yet, so there's, a, there's basically, I wanted to know, is it based on a time time lapse or is it based on the questions themselves? Because for most of us who are doing the questions, we, like I, I've done it four times and I've gotten the same mark four times, but it's not giving me the certificate. Okay. Yeah. No, it's just the questions. I mean, actually, you have thirty minutes to do your your online test. The time is running on the internet, and then uh, if you don't do it in this thirty minutes, you're gonna fail the the test. But if you do it and you have the right answers. You will pass. That's not a problem. So, but no, if you do it in less time, you're not going to have more uh, a, a higher grade than if you do it in 30 minutes. That's not how it works. Okay. If you come tomorrow, I will help you out with the with the theater of mixing. We'll do it all together. That's not a problem. Um, so yeah, guys, like please tell us who want to do this, and we will be very very happy to actually go along with you in the inscription to have. Uh, some Kenyan bartenders and scribe uh, applicants for ATCC, yes. So, so we already have more. Sorry? Where? Where? Uh, all the details are going to come, like, definitely is going to. Hi. Um, so, what we're going to do is. Uh...